Hello everyone. It is time once again for Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we're in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, and we pick up our study <clears throat> where we left off last time, and that would be verse 10. So get your Bible, if you can, open it up to Mark chapter 4, verse 10. We will begin in just a minute. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at the Bible verse by verse dot com. If I didn't love the Word of God, I wouldn't be doing this for over 30 years. It is my passion. It is the right thing to do. It is what God has called me to do and to do it right, which means not water it down. So, over 30 years of archives are there for you to study three complete series going through the Bible at thebibleversebyverse.com. Audio Bible messages. Just click and listen to whatever book, whatever chapter you want to study. But it's important to study. And I pray that you make use of it. Because we all need to, we all need to know the Word of God and study it together. In Jesus' name, I pray that you do it. Well, let's start. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Mark 4, verse 10. Now, <clears throat> Jesus has just told probably a parable that is familiar to many of you. The parable of the sower and the four different types of soil that he sowed his seed on. And it says in verse 10, And when he was alone, they, his followers, that were about him, with the twelve, asked of him the parable. So the majority of the crowd left, which is not unusual. They heard the parables, they saw Jesus, they left. Nice story. The majority walked away, had other things to do. But there were some who stayed because they wanted, they wanted to know more. They had a heart for God. And they stayed in order to pursue truth. It takes work to pursue truth. It takes work to turn off the television to spend time in the Word of God that you could be doing other things. And not all bad things either. But the most important thing is the Word of God. That's why I mention the Scripture Verse by Verse website. That's a place where you can do it. You can study the Word of God until it is coming out of your nose. Stuff yourself with the Word of God. It takes work. It takes discipline. But once you start doing it, you're going to like it. And you won't be able to get back for more. Sincere people make an effort to pursue truth. And it does take effort. And it's not always convenient. But it is always, every single time, rewarding. Your spirit will thank you. Verse 11. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto those who are outside, all these things are done in parables. The outsiders were those who didn't make a commitment to Christ or a commitment to pursue truth. Maybe they enjoyed listening to Jesus after all, there was no television. Books were hard to come by. Not a whole lot to do for entertainment. So come and listen to Jesus. See him do a few miracles. No doubt they really love that. But that was as far as their interest in Christ went. The outsiders would hear his parables 
and maybe enjoy the story too, but they would not grasp the spiritual meaning of the story. And even worse, they didn't care that they couldn't grasp it, so they left. 12. Let's read 11 along with it. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto those who are outside all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. The indifferent and the rebellious see and hear truth just like everyone else, but they don't get it. It just doesn't click. And I can tell you why they don't get it. It's not because the truth is too complicated. God's truth is very simple. It's not complicated at all. Bible teachers sometimes make it complicated in order to impress the listeners. They do such a disservice to God. I remember one time when I was going to Bible college, I was looking forward to all my electives were Bible and theology in addition to majoring in theology and Bible. All my electives were Bible and theology too. Well, 99% of them. No, all of them were. Um, I, was, I was so excited. I couldn't wait because one of my electives was the Gospel of John and I was going to get to study a book of the Bible. And the professor was horrible. Absolutely horrible. He took the simple Word of God and he made it so complicated that by the time I got done listening to his lecture, I had no idea what he was saying. He cluttered it with his own thoughts. The Word of God isn't that hard to understand. It really isn't. Not if you have a hunger for truth. God made truth simple and easy for anyone to understand. But even a brilliant teacher like the Son of God can't make a person understand if they don't want to. When it comes to understanding the Word of God, sometimes the problem is with the receiver, not the transmitter. Now, in the case of that professor that I had, the problem was with the transmitter. I had a hunger for God's Word. I was open. I was excited. I was salivating at the thought of having the Word of God. And the receiver was horrible. I mean, I should say the transmitter was horrible. He was terrible. Doctor so-and-so. Doesn't mean anything. Sometimes the problem is with the receiver, not the transmitter. But sometimes it's with the transmitter. But I can tell you this. If the Word of God is given out simply and clearly, but it doesn't click with the people who hear it, then the problem very definitely is with the receiver, not the transmitter. 13. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all the parables? The sower soweth the word. The sower, or the farmer, in this parable represented Jesus and everyone else who gives out the word of God for that matter, 15. And those are in these, and these are they by the wayside where the word of God is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Remember the wayside people? The farmer sows the sowed and sowed the, sows the seed, I should say, and some of it fell on, on paths that were hardened down, packed down from people walking on them. Jesus says those people or those seeds on that path represent people who are spiritually indifferent, hard, like that path, hard. And as a result, the Word of God hits their soul and just lays there, 
just lays there right on top of their soul. It doesn't sink in. It doesn't register because there's no interest in it. Then Satan and his devils, hmm, they notice what's going on. They see the word laying there on top of that person's soul, and they don't want to take any chances. So they quickly come and they snatch the word of God away from them so that they cannot think about it at some future time. It's gone because their hearts were hard. They didn't care. 16. And these are they in like manner that are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Remember the stony ground seed? The farmer sowed seed. Some of it landed on ground that looked good, looked real good, but it was only like about an inch thick, about an inch deep, and then underneath that was a bedrock. So the seed landed, and if there was moisture in the ground, it shot right up because it couldn't go down. It went up. There couldn't be any roots because the stone was there. So whatever energy was in that seed went up. And these people are represented by that seed. These people, these are the people who hear about Jesus, maybe at a Christian rally, I don't know, a Christian concert, I don't know, some sort of thing like that. They hear Christ in the setting where everybody's excited, everybody's emotional. They catch the Jesus fever, but it's all emotion. They don't repent. They're all, they, they don't repent. Probably Repentance probably wasn't even mentioned. And they certainly have not taken the time to count the cost of following Christ, and no one has told them. It's all superficial. It's all surface level. They haven't thought anything through. They just jumped on board the Jesus bandwagon because everybody else was doing it. So look at 16 and 17. And these are they in like manner that are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when, the, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So these people are all about feelings. They pray, Jesus save me because it felt right and it was exciting and it was the cool thing to do in that environment where they were. So they did it. But then, after telling a few people about their faith and not receiving a pat on the back for it, but instead maybe laughed at or persecuted in some other way, the bad feelings begin to outweigh the good feelings that they had, and so they walk away from Christ. It just isn't worth it because they were governed by feelings. Those who are governed by feelings rather than the word of God and a deep love for Jesus will, will not stay with Christ very long. If you're not willing to stand alone, you're not going to stand very long. Verse 18. And these are they that are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this age and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So the people who are represented by the seed sown among the thorns are those who are too preoccupied with the things of this world to give any serious thought to God. It goes in one ear and out the other because they just don't have time. They have a lot of weeds in their life, a lot of things competing for their attention. They don't have time to think about God. They really don't have any interest in the Word of God. They are consumed with anything and everything in this world except God. The Word of God never sinks in, and it never produces fruit. 
verse 20. And these are they that are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, some one hundred. And here you see a picture of real Christians. These are truly saved people. They hear the word of God, they accept it, and they bear spiritual fruit. They appreciate Jesus, they love Jesus because they are saved and the Holy Spirit has come to live inside of them. They have truly repented, they have truly made a, made a commitment to follow Christ, so the Holy Spirit really did come to live inside of them and that's why they appreciate Jesus and that's why they love Jesus and they do things that help their relationship with Him like being in the Word, being in prayer, and as a result, the Holy Spirit does good things through them. They're the truly saved people. And some bore fruit 30, some 40, some 60, some 100, whatever it was. Different levels, and that's true of Christians, real Christians. Some Christians bear more fruit than others, but all Christians bear at least some fruit as a natural result of knowing and walking with Christ. There is no such thing as somebody who receives Christ and enters into this state of being a carnal Christian where they never live for Jesus, they, you can't tell the difference between them and the world. They're not saved. 21. And he said unto them, Is a lamp brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed? and not to be set on a lampstand. And this just goes right along with what I just said and what Jesus just said in verse 20. Some things just do not make any sense at all. And you'd have to be crazy to do it. You spray paint, spray paint all your light bulbs black. That's stupid. Or something similar to what Jesus says here, no one in their right mind covers a light with a quilt. I think I'll screw this 100-watt light bulb in and uh, make sure the meter is spinning so that public service can send me a bill, but I'll put a, I'll put a blanket, I'll put a quilt over this light bulb so it doesn't give, out a, give off any light. You say, well, what's the point that Jesus is trying to make? His point is this, no real Christian will continue to cover the light of holiness with a quilt of sin. It's not going to happen if you're saved. According to 1 John, point blank, it doesn't happen. So if you have bought into the lie and somebody has told you, well, that you're saved and you can't lose what you have, but you're just a carnal Christian, that's why you don't give a rip about Jesus. You have been, you have been told a lie. And you don't have to believe me if you don't want to, but you're going to find out after you're dead. And Jesus takes one good look at you and says, get away from me into hell, for, our, for you are a worker of iniquity. Doesn't make sense to cover a light with the quilt. And Jesus is saying it doesn't make sense to suggest, to even suggest that any real Christian would live in continual rebellion against God. It doesn't make sense. Okay? Jesus didn't teach that nonsense. You have to be a 20th century theologian to come up with that brilliant stuff that contradicts the Word of God. Oh, you're so intellectual. And you can tell me what the Greek word really means so that you can fascinate everybody with your intellect that contradicts the simple word of Almighty God. We Christians still sin. I'm not saying we don't sin, but we do not continue to sin without repentance. Christians want truth, and they want to apply truth, and they want to live holy because they love Jesus. 22. For there is nothing hidden which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come to light. God does not reveal truth to Christians just so we can internalize it. He wants his people to live truth and pass it on to others 
and he wants us to do it for good reason. Just think about all the evangelists of evil that are out there in the world. All the evangelists of evil. All the evangelists of evil that the devil has in this world. They come in every size and every shape. And they're just about everywhere. Sin and lies are promoted in so many different ways. Wrong ideas about God, wrong ideas about heaven, about Jesus and hell are so widespread. Which means that God needs voices as well. Which means that God needs someone who will speak the truth. He needs Christians who will talk about Jesus as if Jesus is alive and well and talk about God's word as if it is truth and strive to live holy because it is what God demands. That's what God needs. That's what he has called every single Christian without exception to do. God wants these things to be true in the lives of every single Christian. Just the way the world talks so freely about evil and shamelessly lives contrary to the word of God. He wants people, his people, to talk about truth and to proclaim the truth of God's word and to help proclaim the truth of God's word and to live holy sh without shame, without embarrassment. Jesus is saying, don't keep my ways a secret. Don't keep my word a secret. God deserves to be seen and he deserves to be heard through Christians and the world needs to experience the real Christ and the real God that created them and who is also going to be their judge. 23. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus is saying, don't just hear the words of Scripture, but also have a humble, obedient attitude in order to catch the meaning and know how it should be applied to your life. Because if, unless you have a humble, teachable spirit, you're not going to catch the meaning and you won't apply it. And if you don't apply it, well, you're going to lose the truth that you have. Because notice verse 24. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye measure, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. In other words, start applying the truth that you already understand. And if you do, your understanding of truth is going to increase all the more. See, applying God's word gives us a greater capacity to understand God's word. There are no tricks. There are no formulas. There are no gimmicks to understanding the Bible other than read it and study it and believe it and live it. I told you it wasn't that complicated. 25. For he that hath to him shall be given. And he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. And that's what I was just talking about. Everyone starts out life with a basic understanding of God, which we are born with, according to Romans chapter 1. The Bible says that God has placed eternity within the heart of man. Now, what a person does with that basic, inborn, inherent understanding of God will determine if they get more or eventually lose what they have. Truth is like a muscle. If a person doesn't exercise, then their muscle shrinks. They lose what they have. If they exercise, then their muscle gets harder and stronger. And if a person doesn't love truth and apply truth, they will lose the conviction that they have and eventually be begin to believe a lie. 
26. And he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of itself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full grain in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. So what Jesus is saying here is that a farmer cannot force a seed to grow. A farmer cannot beg or manipulate a seed to grow. He plants it, and if it is good soil and good seed, there's some sunshine and some rain, it grows. And in the same way, Christians cannot get someone into the kingdom of God by force, or by begging, or by any other fleshly attempt. You just can't do it. You can't. Quit, you modern evangelicals, quit trying to be like the world and think that you're going to win the world to Christ that way because they're just going to think you're so cool. Do you know you cannot cool anyone into the kingdom of God. You can cool someone into joining your church. You can play your Christian rock. And there's no difference between that and secular rock. You can play it. And you can impress the loss. And you can get them to follow along, follow along with your group. But you will never cool anybody into the kingdom of heaven because the message of the cross is not cool. There's nothing cool about being a worthless sinner, as the Bible says you are. As a desperate sinner, as the Bible says you are. One who is totally depraved, in need of a Savior, with no hope of saving yourself, so rotten to the core that in fact your only hope was for the Son of God, the eternal Son of the Eternal Father, to give up His omnipresence, take on a human body, be born a baby, live 33 years, a sinless life, and then die a hideous, torturous death as a sacrifice. Take the suffering that you had coming to pay for your sins. That's not a cool message. You can't cool anybody into the kingdom of heaven with that message. You can't manipulate people into the kingdom. That just doesn't work. All we can do is give out the word of God or help get out the word of God. If a person then wants God, after hearing the word, they will repent and receive Christ after hearing what the Bible says. The Word of God produces salvation in people who want it. It is out of your hands. It is between them and God. The truth alone saves. All we can be is pipelines to that truth. If you want to study more truth, you can at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, found at thebibleversebyverse.com. I encourage you so much to go there. If you haven't begun a verse-by-verse -verse study with me through the whole Bible, now would be a perfect time to do that. Go to the book of Genesis. First, choose one of the three series going all the way through the Bible. Go to the book of Genesis. Click the very first chapter, the very first book of the very first chapter, and begin a verse-by-verse -verse study with me. Go all the way through all 66 books of the Bible. It'll bless you because there's nothing like the Word of God. While you're there, Please remember, I'm not underwritten by a large church or denomination. And if you want to be a part of this ministry, pray for me, would you? Pray for the Word of God. Click the Donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Stand with me. Let's get out the Word of God together. Enjoy Jesus in the Word.
and then let's share it with others.